Hi, today we're going to install the Yaga Strada low H2O, low water content radiator. Um, as can be purchased online or through your large plumbers merchants. This is a, um, a crossover between domestic and commercial product. It can be used as, as it was suggested, either commercially or domestically. So, to start with, we're going to fit the heating set, which is the low, low water content element brackets and the associated valves as well. So just cut the band in. To free the two elements. And expose the heat exchanger. So the heat exchanger in this case is 800 long type 11. And what we're going to do first is just cut these ends off to make sure to expose the steel plates on the end where we're going to clip the brackets. So just round your standing knife around and remove the polythene. By only removing the ends of the polythene, it leaves the element protected join the rest of the remaining of the work on the in the room or on the site. So that's our element now ready for installation. So we're going to click the brackets on. And there's a bit of a technique to this bit because the brackets firstly are handed. It's important that the foam is at the front and the return folds are always pointed inwards. So in this case, as a right hand installation, they will be positioned for well, this is what, what happens with this now is this bracket drops down in there, but these tabs here have to come outside of this plate, and then these two snap down the end. So that's now your bracket fitted, heat exchanger ready to be mounted on the wall. So we need to establish where the um, where the unit is going to be fitted. So generally this would be under a window. So you work from the centre of your window. In this case we haven't got a window so we can position it pretty much wherever we want to. Important thing to, to note when you're installing the radiator because it is a suspended convector, um, it, you do need to ensure you've got sufficient air underneath the radiator. So it'll be positioned somewhere around right here to allow for air to come in underneath the heat exchanger and through and out through the top of the case. So what I'm going to do, because this is a finished wall, I'm just going to run a couple of pieces of masking tape down the wall where I'm going to mark the hole. This just prevents damage to the, to the wall surface. If this was a, a building site then, so where the walls have yet to be finished, this wouldn't be so critical. as you'd be marking on raw plaster. wouldn't matter whether it was damaged with a pencil line. So this, as I said, this particular product needs to be mounted 100mm up from the floor. So I'm going to actually mount it 150mm up, knowing that I've got a bigger skirting board than 100mm. So i just check that it's all horizontal. I'm going to put the spirit level on lift this up to my 150mm mark. Yeah. Check that I've got it level.
Now, as this is a solid wall, we're going to use traditional nylon plugs for the fix-ins. Uh, so we're going to drill an 8mm hole for the 8mm raw plugs that are supplied. But if this was a stud wall or a partition wall, you might choose to use something slightly different. Very much depends on the wall structure, but your local hardware supplier should be able to advise on what's required. So now I'm just going to drill the holes. Okay, now with the holes marked, we can, or the holes drilled, we can fit the roll plugs. And then the, the fixings that we supply, which are a coach bolt type. And they're hex headed to make it easier to tighten. But these don't need to be tightened fully at this stage. Just in, so they're protruding about 10 mil, 15 mil, something like that. And the reason for them to be protruding is so that you can put the heating set onto the brackets and then just drop the horseshoe washers over the top and tighten up. Right, now that the heating set is fitted, we'll fit the automatic air vent, which just screws into the top of the heat exchanger. And this just needs to be tightened up by hand. At this point, it'd be advisable to just loosen the red cap to allow for the vent in them before putting the case on, tighten the tap, cap back down. Now, for this application, we're gonna assume that the pipe work is coming out from the wall, from the either from the room behind or from in the cavity itself. So we're gonna use the angled valves and the angled lock shield. So much the same as any other radiator valve, you've got the radiator tail itself that needs to be screwed in. So just a couple of wraps of PTFE tape around the thread just before you want to get into the end. That is an O-ring seal around there, so it doesn't need to be over tight, but it, it does need to be tight, so it doesn't leak. And again, the same process with the lock shield. Tight. Remove the protective plug and screw in the correct one thing that's unique about the Yaga valves is the way that the fitting attaches to the pipe work. So here I'm just going to show you how to fit correctly fit the nut and olive onto the valve body. So 
If you imagine this is your piece of pipe coming through the wall or from the floor, you need to slip the nut over the pipe, push the brass olive with the split and the o-ring over the pipe so it protrudes, so the pipe protrudes about three or four mil, seven mil, something like that. And then this needs to be tightened onto the M24 thread. Now that's hand tight and in most applications you would say hand tight and just pinch it would be sufficient. With these valves that's not the case. This needs to be tightened considerably more than a normal compression fitting. The correct tightening torque is on the fitting instructions but as a good rule of thumb for the first fixing you you could say that that nut needs to cover very nearly all of the thread of the valve. So now you would fit the valves. and tighten up okay. So now the final stage of the installation is to fit the case in. So what we'll do first is just run our knife across the polythene. Go. And just all the we'll now fit the case in. We need to make sure we're going to fit it the right way up. There's cutouts at low level, and these are the bottom of the case in. case in itself, just position it over the valve body, cross, lift it so it locates into the bottom, wrap it, push it toward and then push it down. That now is located or fitted, it's not located correctly just yet but we'll adjust that shortly. So now you fit, you fit the top grill, and the top grill is slightly louvered, and generally you would louver it towards the front. That just drops in. Okay, so we'll remove the, remove the cap, the protective cap, and we will just slide the radiator casing itself over, so it just comes to the rib behind the threads. Now there's obviously a fairly unsightly hole around the valve, so we provide some collars that can just be clipped in. Before the head is fitted. And the TRV head itself has got a locking collar around it. You might just need a Stanley knife or a blade or a terminal screwdriver to split. There is a mark in them. You can just take the plastic collars off, turn the valve head itself up to five or as high as it will go. Position, make sure you rotate it round so that you can still see the indicator mark and just tighten. And this only needs to be hand tight so that it's easier to remove in the future. And then place the locking collars back around. And then at the other end of the radiator, we provide a blanking plug that fits into the same hole as the previous silver collar, 